that's how this that's how the movie started yeah you know i so first and foremost top gun maverick saw it had a blast with it's a good film man i had so much fun and it was honestly i didn't i have memories of the first top gun i own it on vhs uh, if I could ever find a VHS player that still worked in this house. But, uh, no, I have fond memories of the first Top Gun. But, you know, it's been for almost 40 years. <laughs> We're going close to it. I'm sorry, I'm just taking a sock off. Pull my sock off. Um, it's been almost 40 years, um, to be precise. It's been um, 30, I think, 36. So it's closing on 30 years. It's been over 30 years. I... <sighs> I, don't, I didn't know if this one was going to stack up or not, but everything I was hearing, the trailers are great, the reviews for it, and, you know, the buzz coming out of it was fantastic, and, you know, I went to go see it, and literally, that first, the chords, like, boom, boom, and then, not more than 20 seconds after that, do 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 highway to the danger zone, you're like, okay. Take, you earned my money at this point. Thank you. <laughs> I will say, though, during the opening, like, screen, the credits, I did laugh a little bit to myself. I'm like, oh, with Ed Harris, John Hamm, Glenn Powell, and Val Kilmer. Like, wait a minute, they didn't show Tom Cruise. Not that you really need to. But yeah, that's probably why they didn't do it. Um, but look, this is pretty much everything I've heard. Like, it, I've heard it's just better than the original. And, yeah. Honestly, it is because you know it, it, it has it has a sense of a very much sense of self awareness to it. It's very much trying hitting a lot of those nostalgic beats. Uh, there's a scene where Goose's son plays great balls of fire. Uh, I heard that one. I heard a lot. Of, uh, some people say that felt a little too much, but when you stop and think about it, and they show a flashback to the scene, you realize he grew up like that. Like his dad probably did that a lot. So, of course, he would learn that song. Um, you know, there's great callbacks to the original. Uh, but they don't... They don't solely focus on nostalgia. I don't I don't feel they solely focus on nostalgia. They do a lot of it, and it works. But I don't think they fo solely focus on it. They, uh, they do continue the story. You know, they let you know what Maverick's been doing. Why he's been doing it, frankly. Um... And it makes sense, given his personality, why he had been doing the things he's doing. Then he's called back to Top Gun to be an instructor, uh, called in by, Val by, by Iceman. Um, and then you have the issue with Goose's son, Rooster, and why and why he's actually upset with Tom. Believe it or not, the reason he's upset with Tom, with the Maverick is not the reason you would think. Uh, I mean, it's part of it, but there's more to it than that. And they do delve into it. And then their reconciliation is actually pretty freaking is pretty good um the climb the climax of this movie is actually freaking fantastic oh my god the climax of this movie is just holy crap it's like yeah 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 ah yeah ah like it's, it's like that you're just like yeah <laughs> um they do the same thing in the this that they do in the original they don't tell you who the enemy is but the enemy is messed up. the enemy has fifth generation fighters you know and behind enemy lines like but who is the enemy never mentioned very smart of you to do that. Um, yeah, no, but it, Tom Cruise is great. <laughs> but of course, of course, they got to do the, a version of the volleyball scene where it's now football. And of course, Tom Cruise has got to be playing with his shirt off. And let me tell you, cause Tom Cruise is pushing 60. If I can look half that good at 60, I will be a happy man. <laughs> I'm already, I'm 32 at the moment. And I feel like I'm, sometimes I feel a little out of shape, but mostly I feel like I'm in decent shape. Um, not like, I'm not, that good a shape like we see in that in this movie, but I feel like I'm I'm doing I'm doing okay. <laughs> but if I could be like look half as good as that guy physically, uh, at, when I'm about to hit sixty, I will be a happy son of a bitch. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, I they they do a great job of playing playing up the nostalgia, playing up the characters. Um, do, honestly. Throwing because there's the, the villain is the the villain the enemy, but they do a good job at giving you some antagonists people you 
like to not like. You like not liking them. And, the, and But then ultimately they're like redemption. John Hamm and Ed Harris are kind of those characters. Ed Harris is very briefly in the movie, like near the beginning. Uh, but, you know, he just wants to get rid of, um, you know, pilots and just do straight drones. It's like, and uh, honestly, you know, if I were a civilian and I hear this, I would have no problem looking at him. He's like, yeah, have a little uh, bit of an objective there. Uh, a little bias. <laughs> and you know, I was like, where do you get off talking to me like that? Oh, uh, I get off by talking to you like that because I'm a civilian. I can speak to you however I want. I'm not employed by you at all, sir. And I respect your service, but you seem to be grinding an axe against these guys. Uh, <laughs> uh, you honestly, that is because, you know, let's be honest. Yeah, drones may be the future to some degree, but drones can't think outside of the box like a human can. At least not right now they can. Uh, there is no AI that is that capable to be able to just think outside the box and just create spon uh, uh, spontaneity on the spot and do something just random. So, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, then you get the, the goose to apparently Roosters Maverick in this case, which is uh, Hangman. And he played by Glenn Powell. And my God, I can't, I don't know if I've seen Glenn Powell in anything else, but my God, does that dude have a shit even grin on his face? Like, they make no hesitation about, or give you no hesitation to let you know, oh yeah, this is Rooster's Iceman here. This is his Val Kilmer. And he, he plays up douchebag extremely well. But at the end of the day, he is a good guy. He's not an evil person. He's just a douche. John Hamm is more of the focal antagonist to Cruz, if you will. Um, he's the guy who's like, I don't want you here, but we have to have you here. So follow the damn rules, Maverick. No more going, Maverick, Maverick. That guy. He's that guy. And you know what? Damn it. He plays it well. Uh, he plays it well. I always like John Hamm. John is a very entertaining actor. I've always enjoyed seeing him pop up and stuff. He has that capacity, I think, to be a leading man, but they, I don't think anyone's really ever given him just a lead role in a film, at least not too many. Um, cause I remember him in tag and he was great in tag. Um, he was in, uh, baby driver, loved him in baby driver. He at least does great side characters. I'd love to see him because a lot of people kind of, uh, were not petitioning, but you know, when talks of a new Batman were coming around for like the Ben Affleck stuff before we got off, like people were saying, Oh, John Hamm. I'm like, yeah, John Hamm could have worked. Apparently Josh Brolin was actually up for Batman. He was the runner up. I'm like, I could have definitely done Josh Brolin as Batman too. Holy crap. You want to talk about a gritty Dark Knight Returns, Batman. <laughs> anyway, uh, back back to the plot. Um, yeah, the fighter pirate, uh, fire jet stuff, though, man. When you know that the fact that you know they're doing like ninety percent of that, if not all of it, the stuff they're doing in there is just crazy as hell. Holy crap! And it is intense. It is awesome to watch. There are some great sequences here, and it is fun. Watching Tom Cruise take these really hot shot pilots down a peg, um, particularly Hangman, particularly a Rooster, Miles Teller. Uh, the love interest Jennifer Collie, Jennifer Collie, she's she's entertaining too. I will admit, when they first meet, I'm like, I, I get you have history, but man, lady, you're kind of being a bit of a prick to him <laughs> for no real reason other than it's been years since you saw him. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Is she still fine? I've heard people say she might be the one thing that isn't as good. The love interest uh, isn't as good in this as uh, in the original. I can't remember the original very well for that, but I don't know. I thought she worked really well. And then, and so look, it's no secret Val Kilmer's in the movie. And obviously we know that in recent years, he, I believe he suffered, was it throat cancer or esophageal or, thi or uh, thyroid? He's, Basically, he lost pretty much most of the use of his voice. Um, and so, uh, you know, doing what he used to do is no longer as easy. He just He's just not the same man he was. But they still use him, and they use him in a way. And at first, I'm like, okay, so I don't think he can talk anymore. I'm not going to exactly explain the scene involving it, but they use... But, but they use... Um, they use his condition to it as his advantage... Um, and it's a great scene and it does lead up to something where I'm like, damn, man, damn, this is not only is this a good scene, it's making me like really <laughs> appreciate Val Kilmer a lot more. Like I've always liked Val Kilmer. I really have, but like 
knowing what he's had to go through in recent years, and knowing that he's still going and moving and you know doing his thing just in a different capacity, really makes me respect the guy a lot more. Uh, and it's a great scene. It's a beautiful scene, honestly. So, I mean, yeah. Uh, is there anything I could say against the film? That's a good question. Is there anything I could say against Because no film is perfect. I could probably point out little flaws here or there or whatever. Uh, probably some jargon. Actually, I was watching um, Legal Eagle, uh, you a lawyer of YouTuber, uh, who has a, he's a, a legit lawyer. He has a YouTube channel, and he had uh, was doing Top Gun, the laws that are broken Top Gun. He had a guy from the uh, from the actual Navy uh, on there who's also a lawyer, and he pointed out that all of their call signs, except for maybe one guy's call sign, his call sign is Bob, so that one might have actually stuck, been a real one. Uh, all the call signs were way too cool for real life. Most most call signs are on the embarrassing side. Uh, hey, my last name actually, I don't think anyone's I've ever actually said my last name on the on channel. My last name is Fish F I S H. You want to try to make an embarrassing call? If I'm in the in Navy, if I'm in the Air Force Navy um, uh, uh, Navy Corps or uh, Air Force Corps, you want to try to do an embarrassing game for me? Guppy, minnow, uh, fish, tuna, whatever. Throw it out, man. You you can't you cannot touch me in terms of embarrassment when it comes to my name. Do the best you can, you will fail. Um, because look, when you were you know when you have that last name growing up, you will hear some you know bad, you know um unpleasant words or uh, phrases thrown at you. Surprisingly, I didn't get a lot of that, but I did get some. Uh, and you know what? Eventually, you hit a point in your life where you just don't give a fuck anymore. Like. Yeah, uh-huh, yeah, yeah. And you realize it's actually much more entertaining when someone is trying to upset you, and they can't, and they start getting frustrated that they can't upset you. <laughs> and you realize, ah, oh, yes, this is power! <laughs> I hope that I, you know, I can literally make that the thumb that you, Power! Like, that, make that the thumb, the, the image there for Top Gun or you. Uh, no, I'll just keep whatever image just pops up here. I meant to get some sunglasses and just have, you know, look like Maverick for a little bit, but yeah, it didn't plan that. And that's fine. Um, yeah, is there anything negative I could say? Honestly, like, like legitimately negative. I don't think there's anything legit, legit, legitimately negative uh, I can think about in this movie. There's some stuff that maybe doesn't work as well as other things, but ultimately, I... I just had a blast with this movie. It's not my favorite movie of the year right now. It would still probably be in my top ten, but it's not my favorite movie of the year right now. Uh, I've got probably a couple others that outrank this, definitely. But this is a good time at the box office. <laughs> I, I enjoyed it. It's a good time at the theaters. Uh, I highly recommend it. If you like the original, you'll love this. Honestly, if you haven't even seen the original, you'll probably still be able to follow this fine. And you'll get a lot of, uh, good, uh, a lot of good uh, stuff out of this. I'm entertained. So, for my money, I recommend it wholeheartedly. Now, uh, before I go, the Bob's Burger movie. Don't worry to the person. I, I don't name that person anymore. They found it a little embarrassing, and that's fine. It wasn't my intention. Normally, when I give a shout-out, people are like, cool, I got a shout-out. But if you're embarrassed, I won't I won't use your name again. Uh, and I, I totally respect that. Uh, yeah, you asked me to go see Bob's Burgers. I'll probably explain this again on Sunday, because I don't know if they're going to be watching this review or not. Um, but, uh, I'm going to do that this coming week because the two films coming out, I know nothing of, but once I think a documentary, the other is something I just don't really care about at all. Cause I don't even know what it is, but because I was asked to see Bob's Burgers, I'll probably just do that this coming week. And that allows me to ask my friend who is a big Bob's Burgers fan. If she wants to join me because I am not a Bob's Burgers fan. <laughs> so I would at least like someone there to soften the blow. Anyway, I digress. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy, and I'll see you folks for the next one. And remember, danger zone! Yeah.